Something shifts after the winter solstice when daylight begins to grow again. Our yearning to go out to the garden and start growing plants again increases with each passing day. Early spring is the peak time for garden thoughts, and it is when our best intentions manifest into improbable dreams. We may not get to fulfill them all, and certainly not all our efforts are fruitful, but part of this ritual of planning and planting is food enough for the soul to nourish it for a year more. I went out in an unseasonably warm March day to sow beets. Generally, you want to get the beet seeds in the ground as soon as you can, even before your local last frost date is due, since they tolerate the cold. While they may withstand light frost, they much prefer temperatures around 60 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit to properly sprout. Anything below 40 degrees will arrest germination, so they may take two to three or even up to four weeks from sowing to start showing signs of life. I don't know about you, but I hate having to wait weeks on end to know if my planting efforts were worth the trouble. When it comes to germination, I'm impatient and would rather hasten the process along. I've been experimenting with cold frames to aid in germinating seeds sooner. The glass creates a mini greenhouse effect, letting the sun's warming radiation pass through while retaining the heat providing a boost to soil temperatures thus increasing and hastening germination. A simple wood frame with glass will work beautifully. I usually start plants indoors in cups to transplant them at a bigger stage when the weather has warmed up a bit, but beets, being a root crop, prefer to grow directly where they will spend their whole lives in. So the old tried and true direct seeding method is still the best way of growing them. I made shallow trenches to drop the beet seeds in a line so that later it would be easier to identify them. Beet seeds are actually composite seeds with more than one seedling in each. That means that you'll have to invariably thin your plants later on if you want to have bigger well-developed roots form. For that reason it is essential not to overcrowd the seeds. Because they are rather large seeds they are easier to handle and space out. Dropping a seed every two inches or so is probably the most recommended practice, but if you know me, I like to cram my plants in to specially dissuade weed growth. When plants grow shoulder to shoulder, they shade out the soil. Weed seeds usually sprout when exposed to sunlight because they are programmed to fill up a bare piece of earth to preserve the biology and structure of soil. When Sprout in borrowed ground, waiting for springtime to come around. Dream seeds remain over parched earth till harvest rain. Hastening germination of the crops you intend to grow will provide for shorter window of time of exposed soil and the germination of garden weeds. With the seeds safe under glass, now I just had to wait and check every other day to see if the soil had not dried out. I think I can see just the signs of the beets germinating here, so that's, that's a good sign. It's a good thing that it's working and it didn't take more than a week, a week and a half. That's good. We'll see how, how long it will take for us to actually have seedlings off the ground and plants producing. About two weeks later the beets had strong seed leaves. So I took out the glass frame to use somewhere else. I've gotten really good germination with the beets and I think it's warm enough right now to take this off and use it for some other use at this point because it's done its work. Beets can sprout in five to ten days if the seeds are new and kept moist and at the ideal temperature. In fact, I think dry soil is the main reason for delayed sprouting most of the times. They certainly will sprout better during balmy, wet spring weather, but if you want to produce an earlier crop, the cold frame may be an option. I have not tested just soaking the seeds for a day before planting, but I want to try that in the future. Since I can never contain myself to just plant one crop in a spot, I dropped some radish seeds in the hopes of harvesting them before the beets would have time to develop. 
I also let Salsify volunteers grow where they germinated, which is certainly not the best way of prioritizing production. As weeks passed by, the plants grew. Beets are not the fastest growing crop, but I've noticed they will tolerate some temporary shading by others. Garlic I had planted in winter around this bed were getting ready to be harvested, so I would let them mature. Garlic doesn't take as much space and light to grow, so they may not compete as much. The salsify had dominated the bed and shaded the beets. But if I wanted to have the beets produce roots, I would have to clear the bed from the salsify. I would harvest some of the tender flower shoots to eat as asparagus. When eating salsify flowers, make sure to harvest them when they are still young, before they set seed and become tough. I had just learned these parts were edible, so I had to try. If you want to maximize production, give your beets the most sun exposure you can and keep the soil moist, but never waterlogged. Using the flowers of salsify is something that came to my attention recently, and it's really helped me to produce more within the same space, because now I'm not just thinking about the root, but I'm also thinking about eating the flower and the shoots. Um, sometimes salsify will grow too fast and you'll have fibrous roots quickly. And usually when it starts to flower, it's already too fibrous to be consumed. So this way it will actually give you a second crop. If you want a good beet crop, it is a good idea to fertilize your soil in seeding and later on top dressing it with compost and mulch. A fertilizer rich in phosphorus will be especially helpful in developing larger roots. I believe my soil is naturally more fertile and this year I have been experimenting with only top dressing the soil with mulch like grass clippings to see what happens. With rainy clouds on the horizon, I went inside with my cache of salsify roots to prepare and taste them for the first time. I decided to cook them with a simple classic technique using acidulated water. I put some water in a skillet and added salt and the juice of a lime. Once the water boiled, I dropped the shoots and cooked them for a couple of minutes. Then I plated them and drizzled olive oil to finish. They tasted a lot like asparagus, so I was pleasantly surprised to have learned about this alternative use for salsify. Having garden fresh produce in a rainy May day is a simple pleasure that you really cannot buy. Coming up in the next block, I will show you how my beets fared after giving them some more light. Would I have a decent harvest? Right after this commercial. If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. I have also started to work on a children's storybook and plan to release it soon in my Etsy shop. So stay tuned for further developments. There is a time for everything, a time to plant and a time to uproot. This was the latter. Sometimes in polycultures you have to do some hard choices. And especially if you're experimenting with a polyculture you have not tried yet. I can see here that the beets are suffering a bit from the shade cast by the salsify plants and I'm gonna have to take them out. Now some of the salsify has flowered so I doubt that the roots are actually edible but some have not so I'll harvest them see if they're worth eating and that way I'm gonna open up the canopy for them to be able to grow better. Also some of the radishes have bolted and they haven't really produced well so it's not worth keeping them. But they, they'll, they'll work as a living mulch. 
The beautiful thing about a garden is that nothing really goes to waste. Plants that are past their prime and are not useful anymore become a resource to aid in the growth of those still developing. In the case of these salsify plants, there was no reason for me to keep them any longer. The roots of salsify become woody as soon as they flower, making them inedible. Since the root is the most sought after part of the plant, letting them continue growing in the garden without a use for me would only take valuable space and sun that other plants could be using. But what they had robbed from the beads would now be returned as they decayed into on-spot compost. I can see that the beet seedlings were under the salsify really didn't grow. They kind of stunted. Now my hope is that they will pick up from now on once the sunlight opens. This kind of proves how polyculture is not a silver bullet that will magically give your plants happiness and delight. No, they will still compete for resources. I think it's more the sunlight and the water that they compete and less actually the nutrients. Um, because just like in a forest, plants usually stay stationary until there's a clearing. The, then seedlings boost up in growth. That's how it usually happens. So that's what I hope to accomplish here. Now some of these may be tender enough to eat because they snap. So I'm glad I'm getting some of a harvest, although you can use the flowers and the shoots, but I think the roots are still the best part. With more available light, I hope the beets would regain their lost growth as the summer approached its peak. It would be a matter of waiting to see. And indeed, as temperatures soared and the grapevine set its fruit, the beets showed signs of recovery. Fortunately, I kept them inside the wire cage because the groundhog had been doing its rounds about the garden, devouring any stray leaf it found unprotected. Having its leaves raided by animals is another way beets may never get to develop. Beets are like electric machines that store energy in the root. Leaves are like solar panels that capture energy emitted by the sun and transform them into storable sugars. When a groundhog eats a leaf, it causes the plant to waste more energy, building new solar panels instead of storing extra sugars, swelling its roots. A few weeks later, I could start to harvest the beets, as the roots were poking out of the ground. Because not all beets develop at the same time, I like to harvest the larger beets as they grow. While young tender beets are more delicious, they can be harvested for an extended time. This means you don't have to pick them all at once, which is very useful for a personal garden, when you want to only eat a few of them at a time. I was really happy with the way this harvest was turning out, especially with the fact that despite competition and setbacks, these resilient plants had shown strength. <laughs>